I'm hearing several sounds. Sorry for this. Um, yeah, welcome everyone. And uh, this morning session, I will look in the, yeah, let's say, real world application and usage of uh, mainly OSGO software. And uh, without further ado, our first speaker is uh, Giovanni Allegri. He's from uh, yeah, the beautiful Tuscany, Italy. He works at Geo Solutions Group as an architect and product manager, and he's known under his username GeoHappy. Um, <laughs> and he's in the GeoNode uh, Project Steering, I like the username, uh, GeoNode Project Steering Committee and longtime contributor. And well, GeoNode, by the way, is uh, a, or I should say, the open source geospatial content management system. And Giovanni will take us through a gallery of projects and use cases to showcase the versatility and effectiveness of GeoNode. So Giovanni, the floor is yours. Okay, thanks, Just. Hello, everybody. And yeah, the introduction is, was done by Just. So uh, I'm the product manager in GeoSolutions for GeoNode. So uh, in this presentation, uh, I would like to share some cases uh, where GeoNode uh, has been customized, adapted, and uh, yeah, bent to specific uh, requirements. So, um, you know, GeoNode, well, this is our, our company, which is a core maintainer of GeoNode uh, beyond MapStore, GeoServer, and so on. But we are working hard. We have quite an, a, a big team uh, on GeoNode. And um, so our experience in GeoNode is, uh, has been wide in these uh, five, six years we've been working with it. Um, as anybody, we started with one GeoNode, which is the one that you find in the, uh, in the releases that you find inside the, the main repository. So the one GeoNode is the so-called vanilla GeoNode, which is the core of GeoNode, which is everything that is needed. It's the Django application that uh, provides all the functionalities and services for GeoNode. Uh, I think, well, I, I will go quickly um, through the features of GeoNode. I think many of you already know it, so I won't spend much time on this but it's uh, a content management system uh, for geospatial data sets, including some documents, uh, media assets uh, that lets you compose um, applications on top of this data. But the core is about sharing, collecting, and using uh, these data in many different ways. Uh, it's open source, yes, it's uh, open source license. And, um, well, it's well-established uh, platform uh, with a mature set of libraries where Genode uses lots of the G4, G, OSGEO and uh, open source geospatial software. It's mm, built on top of Django, so it's Python application. And uh, this is a platform that is targeting many use cases, both for users, administrators, but also developers. Uh, so developers are well are welcome into GeoNode because it can be easily extended. Uh, from the beginning, GeoNode was the, was designed to be uh, open as open as possible to additions, extensions, customizations. And this is provided by itself, but by the Django platform itself. I mean, it's a framework with a lot of facilities to extend, integrate additional functionalities. And GeoNode uh, um, inherits all these uh, capabilities from, from Django. Currently, Django, GeoNode is a, a suite of services. This, this is just the main ones. So it's a, it's a Django application, which uh, provides mm, by itself uh, a, a client, which is built on Map Store, which is a framework for Geo Solutions, and React. Uh, Map Store is built on top of React. Uh, behind the scenes, we have GeoServer, which provides the, the 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 OGC service on top of Django. Uh, we have PySysw, and and 
and we have PostGIS and PostgreSQL and uh, the GDAL libraries for all the mm, processing behind the scenes. So it's there's are there, in general when we deploy it, we have other services too, but uh, mainly these are the the main components. So in a very quick um, quick overview of the workflow, we have files, remote services, remote files, which is a work in progress, but it's in a good shape already. So many kind, any kind of resource, be it a document or a special layer, can be imported or uploaded into uh, Geonode, either as a local, I mean, local uh, resource. So you copy, you physically copy the data into Geonode uh, and it will be stored as a file system stored or PostGIS database uh, data. Uh, or in case of remote services, you have situations where the data is referring to the remote resource. So with the local data, uh, the data set and the documents are ready to be um, used to build applications on top of them or to be used. Uh, it's not, it's not uh, mentioned here, but of course, Geonode, when the data inside Geonode are ready to be used as OGC services directly, CSW uh, services. So the catalog already provides the data sets and all the metadata uh, for the data sets. But you can go on and build other um, applications on top of these uh, base resources, these resources, which are maps, geo stories, dashboards, and whatever other geo app. Uh, geo stories and dashboards are geo apps. So this is a concept which uh, is um, uh, generic in Geonode. So any any other module can implement a specific geo app. So geo stories and dashboards, for example, are geo apps implementations provided by the uh, so-called map store client uh, application, which is the one that uh, provides also the new client, the client to your node. It provides the client, the default client, the front end application, but it also provides these uh, implementations for two kinds of geo apps. Just stories and dashboards are already available in the 3.3x branch, the development branch of the Series three of Geonode. <clears throat> so at the end, you can uh, use this data, both the the resources and the applications built on top of the resources as OGC services through a REST API, or you can embed because all these um, resources provide a, a, a view, the way to be viewed inside. Uh, third-party HTML application to HTML pages, so as embedded viewers. So as you see, uh, beyond being a, a, a management platform, so where you can manage uh, permissions, you can manage users, people, you can manage uh, workflows, publishing workflows, authoriz um, approval workflows. In the end, for the end users, all the developers, uh, it's a platform that can provide um, all the kind of services that you can need, you might need uh, from a third party app. So this is the core of Geonode, but uh, on top of this core, on top of these capabilities, uh, often we need to build uh, custom applications. And we have a large experience on this. Um, Geonode by itself cannot address all the use cases, of course. So um, the general approach is uh, to wrap Geonode inside the so-called Geonode project. So a Geonode project is um, a container, is a Django project which contains Geonode as, a, as an app. Uh, we have the so-called Geonode project repository, which is a vanilla, which is a template Geonode project uh, with a command coming from Django. You can materialize this project and uh, so build 
uh, generate a project like you know if you are from react you know you have generators for create Re react app and so on so it's a generator okay we have a generator that creates um uh, a project and um with the with the right uh, domain uh, the name of the project and so on so it's a custom django app with this app you can follow all the patterns provided by django so you can uh, use the overloading of templates. You can make extensions to the models. You can even uh, include apps that are your own apps with, that either interact or not with Junode. So you can create your Django project uh, bund bundled with Junode itself. And we did it several times. I mean, in to say the truth, the, the Geonode project is the um, is the way we deploy Geonode always. So we never deploy Geonode vanilla. We always Geonode deploy <clears throat> a Geonode project instance. Even the demo that you can see online, the stable demo, the development demo, they are Geonode projects. So from the past, we have, uh, you see, um, these are old projects, but I mean, it's a quick, a quick um, overview of some examples of the customizations. You will see here, you have a view that is not from Geonode. We have buttons, actions, tabs, views that are not provided by Geonode. They are provided by the custom application, and but they are integrated both functionally and uh, visually integrated into uh, Geonode. So you see in the top and the bottom, uh, you, you see this, it's Geonode. Uh, for UNESCO, we started uh, the work that is being, mm, I mean, it's, it's been the first uh, test to review the homepage uh, for Geonode and the whole layout of Geonode. So you see a grid system, a grid of cards in the homepage. And this is what you will see in the master branch of Geonode now. Uh, so also in this case, this is a Geonode 3, but with a custom homepage and with a custom uh, React application that um, drives the, this homepage. But all the rest is uh, are the templates and the Django views that, that you know from Geonode. In this case, we completely changed also the, the, the UI. So you cannot say that it's Geonode if you don't know it, but behind the scenes, it's Geonode. So only the back end is Geonode and the front end is completely custom. Same for this case for GFDRR. Uh, this is a client built on top of map store client but with uh, custom table of contents custom explorers of data and uh, histograms charts so as you see i mean with that with the infrastructure provided by the django framework you have the freedom to to do whatever you want i mean extending replacing backend and front end okay and just keep what you need in the end this is another example where we have also changed the filtering on the side, the facets filtering in a custom template. So we have added uh, filtering tabs that are not available in a standard Geonode. And with new menus on the top, some of these uh, customizations are available uh, from the Django admin. So you can change the logo, you can change uh, the main color, of the web of Geonode directly from the Django administration. So without having to change the templates or the source code. Of course, these are just the basic changes that you can do. Uh, if you want to do more, we will see later, there are more advanced ways to do that. Uh, Nexus platform is the current, I mean, it's an, a client for us, um, um, HR Solutions client. Uh, and his has, th this has given us the opportunity to start the Geonode master branch. So what will become the four uh, series of Geonode? And it's, it's a complete uh, refactoring of the front end and of some important um, 
pieces and components of the back end, the storage system, the resource management system, the remote services system. So all these services have been completely refactored. Uh, the UI has been uh, optimized a lot. It's a mix of single page application and Django templates. I will, I will show you in briefly. And uh, we have reduced a lot uh, the number of clicks uh, to perform the usual actions on resources. You have quick previews of resources without having to dig into uh, the hier hierarchy of resources. Uh, bring your own Genode. So that's what I was saying. You have a Genode project, you have a Django, Genode Django app. You can put any app that you want behind. And then this is a map store client. The map store client is exactly an app uh, inside the Django project, which provides the client, the map store front end client, which is the default client for Geonode now. It provides its own REST API. And this is used, for example, for the dashboards and the GeoStories uh, resources that I was showing before. And it interacts with Geonode. So you see that if you want to change the back end, the front end, you can just uh, take away Map Store and redo it as you prefer. I mean, you have everything to, to manage Geonode through REST API and so on. So what are, from the point of view of customizing Geonode, what are the objectives for the next major versions? Uh, we, are, we want to make uh, improve the upload and data storage. Uh, and this is a work in progress. Resource cloning, meaning versioning of resources, is already done. We have abstracted map big engine. So GeoNode, GeoSever is an abstract element now. We have a harvester and extended permission systems and so on. But what I really want to say now is that you have a new SPA client, custom templates um, support, and an extended REST API. The REST API v2 uh, is almost uh, complete, and it really gives you the ability to interact however you want with Geonode, both for the in view mode for for viewing resources, uh, searching resources, but also managing uh, Geonode itself if you have, of course, the credentials to do that. And most of these is already available to test the master branch, so. Uh, um, yeah, it's in a good shape. So we have a brand new front end uh, with the React, uh, with everything, with all the all the tool set coming from Map Store. The home page uh, has been refactored. We have a single page with infinite scrolling, which works also as a workspace for users, uh, where you can manage your own resources. We have a single view of the resource, uh, so without uh, it's an editor which is uh, the viewer, full screen viewer of any resource, just partial or document or whatever. And it's also an editor if you have the permissions. And the back office is, well, we are, for the moment, we are reusing the legacy pages, even though integrated, visually integrated with the new styling, the new, the new front end style. And in, we are, I mean, during the next months, the next years, we will probably uh, transition all the back office to the new front end. Uh, one of the things that have been discussed with, uh, with the community was the ability to, to maintain the ability for, for developers to use Django templates, because not, not everybody is able to work on with React or wants to work with React. Or maybe they already have a lot of custom applications and it's not feasible to port these applications to uh, a javascript client a react client so so we did uh and we, we did uh, uh, we reworked the architecture of the front end so that now you can mix react clients uh your own react uh, components with standard old the django apps so there's a template uh, a base template that is wrapping both the React client and the old Django templates. You, so you have the best of the two worlds. Even it's a bit strange. I mean, someone uh, doesn't like to, this kind of hybrid uh, approaches. And but 
this is the best of two worlds in this moment. So we can support any scenario and uh, any mm, context. So, so if you don't want to, talk, to, to, to use a React Client, you can go on with the standard Django templates, no problem. Um, we have broken the standard the general templates into snippets, very granular snippets, so that you can uh, change uh, the single pieces of the templates and you can work on the styling of various gran in, in a granular way. Uh, so you can just override this custom or provide your custom theme and you can change any single piece of these snippets. Um, you can also the configuration of the client uh, has been um, made uh, overridable. So you have many ways to provide this configuration from static static JavaScript, template, uh, settings, and whatever, and everything is merged dynamically. So you can have many channels to, to configure your application or provide custom configurations to your application. And this is an example. I'm, I'm, I won't dig into the details, but I mean, the documentation will tell you all of this. So uh, the, f the future, um, well, we will work on enforcing much more the privacy and provide uh, the privacy API to custom applications in a better, a simpler way. And also we have the ability to provide the dynamically map store plugins inside the client. So without having to bundling custom plugins into the map store bundle, so you can create uh, plugins. Uh, we have an example. Uh, I will show you here. I, I will go fast forward because I see that time is passing. This is a custom Mapster plugin for meteorological data. And uh, this has been put into the application without having to rebundle the Mapster client. So it's just a, uh, a simple uh, plugin, like an extension. It uses the Mapster extension con concept to bundle your own plugin. And the other thing that I was saying, yes, the other big change is the data set style editor, but I think it, I mean, we, we, I can skip these. I mean, it's, it's more about um, new ways to style your resources uh, in a, an efficient way. I don't know if I have more time. I mean, I, mean, I have really gone fast <laughs> over uh, the presentation, but that's the, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I will go to the end. So in the future, this is not a work in progress right now. Um, we want to extend the permission system for styles and data exports <clears throat> because this is really important to um to provide security on top also of the styles and the data exports because i mean every context has its uh policies for on these things and this is not strong enough i mean you have a permission system but it's quite hidden so you don't have the means to control it easily uh Complete the support for non-default just partial uh, workspaces on just ever, so you can compartmentize. Uh, you can already do it, but we are improving that to com the compartment compartmentization uh, of data on the backend services. Um, and then also we are planning to work on a new uh, roles management on uh, just ever which can uh, pull uh, the rules from external services, so an authorization service uh, that can provide the rules uh, to just server services. To, so mm, improve also the integration uh, inside uh, multi-services infrastructure with custom, with custom uh, policies. So you just have to provide the, the 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 permissions for geofence and GeoServer uh, as they understand them, but the way you you build these rules is up to you. So you have the freedom to even beyond what Geonode does. 
Um, yeah, we have data sharding, we have backend services. This is what I was saying before, users and group partitioning. We already have all these concepts, but uh, in most complex scenarios, if in, in particular what someone calls the multi-tenancy uh, scenarios, um, maybe Jonod is not ready to 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 be used uh, in a multi-tenancy uh, environment or to provide multi-tenancy services. You can get there uh, with some effort. You can more or less have it, but it's it's the it's probably it's not the right way to do that. So probably the the better the best way is to you to uh, deploy multiple Geonode nodes and uh, make them share uh, with single sign-on, uh, shared authentication authorization services, shared your server with, uh, uh, with data sharding and so on. And, uh, and maybe you, 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 you get better results. Um, so, by the way, many many of these um uh, improvements are only um, ideas for the moment uh because i mean of course they they are ideas that are coming from our experience on deploying general even in complex and, and enterprise level scenarios and so we have we have the pieces even if they're not built in right to be used in Geonode. Uh, of course, uh, these customization, the way you deploy uh, the customizations that you want to deploy, including secrets, uh, including customizations to the services. I mean, services like the the, the salary service, which is the, the broker, um, the task manager for the synchronous task manager, or the way you, you want to expose your server uh, through Nginx, you might want to change this. So uh, this is doable because uh, the Geonode project provides uh, all the Docker uh, Docker files and the Docker um, images that you can tweak uh, to your special needs. And that's what we do. Um, we leverage in our deployment custom Docker uh, overrides and Docker images and this is the way to go and this is the way we are improving okay thank you uh giovanni yeah for the sake of uh timekeeping and there's uh, uh some questions uh yeah. still thank you very much i'm very uh impressed uh, each year with how juno progresses uh i see there are at least two questions we have two minutes so that uh, we can do so here, I, I put it on screen and I read it uh, for listeners. Is GeoServer always required for GNOW deployment? Can you e.g. also use MapServer instead of well, GeoServer? At the moment, yes. I mean, GeoServer is the only one. Um, but the architecture uh, is open to other backend implementations, but you have to, but they must be implemented. Okay, because you recently switched from, let's say, Geo Network to PyCSW, for instance, I, I understood. Uh, yeah, also Geo Network uh, was removed. Uh, the support for Geo Network was removed from the master branch because there wasn't enough uh, um, maintenance resources for it. So, by the way, in both cases, the architecture still uh, supports implementing custom backends for for the service. Okay, that's that's good to hear. Let's have long, one last question. Uh, can Geo, so you know, we've heard about Geo storage, but can they also be created via the GeoNode REST API? Yes, in particular, not the GeoNode REST API, but uh, the Map Store client REST APIs. So the okay. Map Store client, as I was showing before, provides uh, the REST APIs for these particular kind of geo up so by the way it's a very thin very thin uh rest api uh mm. in, 
So I, I, I would say, yes, I mean, the Genode as you have it with the, with Map Store Client and so on, provides the REST API to build Geo Stories and the dashboards. Okay, thank you very much. Um, yeah, we have to move on. Um, well, thanks again, Giovanni. And uh, I hope uh, more people get inspired now with uh, using a Geonode. Thanks. For